Please listen carefully. Hello, and welcome to the Boxing Wire. I'm your host, Gabriel Hernandez. Uh, glad to be here. Thanks for listening. However you're listening, on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, as well as many others. I can't think of them right now. You can also go to theboxingwire.com. You can listen there as well, just on the media player. Well, however you're listening, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, please support the podcast by sharing it on your social media. I uh, really appreciate it. Go ahead and click subscribe and whatever media player you're using. Um, our social media is The Boxing Wire on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, you're welcome to send me a message. And uh, yeah, happy to be back. Haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, the thing we're going to discuss in this podcast today is just you know the fights this year that uh, in 2020 that we could have have been made and the, you know the great fights that were already uh, set in the date and uh, unfortunately when the epidemic or this pandemic hit uh, the coronavirus um, all those got shelved and uh, put away with no no real no real makeup dates in in the works then and still as of right now uh, but we're also going to discuss the upcoming fights and the possible return, um, maybe even next month. Uh, so we're going to talk about those things uh, today. Um, also, this podcast brought to you by our two sponsors. Uh, you can support the show. Uh, you can go to theboxingwire.com slash sponsors. Uh, you'll see the link there. Uh, it's brought to you today by fanatics.com. Get all your sporting gear there. Uh, Father Day's coming up. Uh, if you're listening to this, uh, in, you know, in real time, it's May 15th. I believe they have a 60% uh, sale uh, site-wide. So, you know, good good work, good place to shop for your dad uh, this coming Father's Day. Uh, another sponsor, which uh, I love as well, Koi uh, CBD. Uh, it's a product I've used for about a year and a half now. I use the vapes. I use the CBD oil. Uh, they're great, you know, just for relaxation, help calm your anxiety, you know, use it for pain. If you have a little aches and pains here after a hard workout, something like that. Um, they're one of our sponsors. Um, you can uh, go to KoiCBD.com. Uh, once you hit that link, uh, at checkout, just use the Boxing Wire as the promo code. So it's the Boxing Wire. Uh, there's no spaces, and it's in all caps, so it's promo code the boxing wire. And uh, you can either go to koicbd.com, or like I said, you can go to our sponsor page. Uh, all these links will be in the description wherever you're listening to. Uh, do us a, do us a favor and uh, support the sponsor because they support uh, the show. Uh, so the, you know, one of the crazy things about this pandemic that's currently going on is that uh, sports have basically shut down. Um, we haven't seen this in our lifetimes. Um, last major, major pandemic obviously was in 1918 with the Spanish flu, uh, but a full-scale shutdown worldwide like this, you know, obviously is a, a once-in-a-lifetime thing for people. And uh, so, you know, most health agencies, countries, and things like that to be very cautious not to have another uh, spread like that, like the one in 1918. Obviously, they've shut shut everything down uh, this past month, month and a half. And obviously, we're left without sports, one of them being boxing, one of the greatest sports, you know, in the world, one of the, one of the first sports in the world uh, here in our modern times. Uh, let's talk about just some of the fights that we've already missed that were on, you know, scheduled to go. Uh, on Ma on March 14th at the Hulu Theater in New York, it was supposed to be Shakur Stevenson versus Miguel Mariaga. That was going to be for Stevenson's WBO featherweight title. Uh, this young young uh, young man was 13 and 0 with seven KOs, showing a lot of flashes of possibly like the next uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. You know, up and coming, one of the next big names in the sport. Unfortunately, you know, he was one of the first one from the first fights to be called off. Just two days before he was supposed to take on uh, Mariaga, because on March 12th, uh, all those um, shutdown of all, 
you know, social distancing and shutting down of arenas uh, was basically mandated by the states and our country. Uh, we also missed March 17th at the Hulu Theater in New York. It was supposed to be Michael Conlon versus Belmar Preciado, featherweights. Obviously, you guys know the popular Irishman Conlon was due to headline his fourth consecutive St. Patrick's Day card at the Hulu Center. Uh, that streak is now over. Uh, March 28th, we were gonna say that we were gonna see man one of my favorite fighters to watch, uh, Arthur uh, Beterbev. That guy's a monster. IBF, WBC, and lightweight heavyweight uh, champion. He's also considered the lineal champion, and that guy's just a beast, man. Power in both hands, um, just coming forward, relentless. Doesn't seem like you can hurt him very easily as well. What makes him even more frightening to watch. I was looking forward to that fight. And then on April 17th, uh, Regis uh, Pergrias was going to fight Maurice Hooker. Uh, and also Luke Campbell was going to fight Javier Fortuna. Uh, man, these were all going to be great fights to watch. And then also on that same day, you know, the beast from Japan, Inoue, uh, was going to fight uh, John Casimero. And that was going to be for the IBA, uh, WBA, WO Bantamweight uh, unification. Uh, that was going to be a heck of a fight. Obviously... Anyway, uh, he came into the sport known in America in the last two years. Uh, he's definitely been backing it up um, with some great fights. And then, of course, into May, we just saw that pass. It was supposed to be, of course, got the single the mile weekend with Canelo Alvarez was going to supposed to face Billy Joe Sanders for the WBA regular and WBO super middleweight. It was going to be a unification battle. And uh, also, you know that. Depending on who was going to win the fight, it was going to be an interesting fight either way. Sa Saunders, very talented fighter, has his issues outside of the ring, obviously, uh, as we've seen in the in the past. But uh, he would have gave Alvarez a, a completely new challenge. Um, would have been interesting to see, but unfortunately, that's you know off the table. And this, assuming that Alvarez would would have won that fight. Uh, it was already in talks for Canelo to fight Triple G for the third time in September. Uh, but obviously because of this social distancing and the shutdown of uh, crowds and, and things like th of that nature, it looks like everything is going to get pushed back. And uh, the funny thing is we really don't know how long. Um, it started off as a couple weeks. Now it's a couple months. Uh, now there's talk of, a, you know, half, six months, a year. We really don't know when uh, the sport, everything will go back to normal. Um, obviously when you watch a boxing match live uh you're sitting shoulder to shoulder with thousands and thousands of people you're cheering you're high-fiving you know no masks and all so you know that could be a, a perfect breeding ground for a virus to spread quickly so i understand the precaution it's just unfortunate that we missed these big fights that were in the horizon uh, i was also looking forward to josh taylor uh who actually beat uh regis uh, progress in the world boxing super series of uh, final and then he signed with the uh, top rank uh, he was due to return home uh, to make his mandatory defense there in uh, glasgow scotland and then and, you know that would have turned into a possible fight with jose ramirez later in the year uh, but unfortunately that never happened and then on top of that uh, jose ramirez was going to fight victor postol which man i was really looking forward to that fight ramirez is obviously coming up a young man but he's a uh, very impressive very uh, fan friendly style the way he comes forward attacks also using va a very good technique um, and not afraid to take a punch to give two and postal you know obviously a very talented fighter um, unfortunately we were supposed to see that fight initially February 1st and that was going to be in China um, but that's obviously the uh, coronavirus or COVID-19 whatever you want to call it uh, originated uh, basically in the, in the headlines that's at that time it was spreading there rapidly so it was postponed because of that and moved to this May 9th date you know assuming at this point everyone assumed that yeah, by May we'd be fine but obviously here we are May 15th and uh, this fight is still on the back burner uh, we don't know when it's ever going to take when it's going to take place and we still don't know um, if it even will who knows what's going to be what happened in two to three months Obviously, we know Anthony Joshua was supposed to fight June 20th uh, at Tottenham uh, Hotspur Stadium, and that was going to be in London versus Kubrat Pulev. 
Uh, that's basically uh, his mandatory after he took back his belt from Andy Ruiz Jr. back in December. Um, he's supposed to make that mandatory def- uh, defense. It was supposed to draw like 70,000 people to that stadium. He's a huge star there. Uh, now, obviously, that's had to be postponed. And there's even was even talks in the last week or two about possibly trying to match him up with uh, Tyson Fury um, to see if uh, Deontay Wilder would waive his his basically his uh, rematch clause uh, but you know that's basically you know that's a pie in the sky type thing and I think at this point since every every fighter has been off for so long uh, hasn't really been uh, in a real fight I think everyone's going to take a step uh, forward slowly you know take care of their mandatory um, tune-up fight before we see these top top fighters back in the ring together and then obviously July 18th, that was huge. That was going to be the trilogy of Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder. Obviously, you know how the first one ended. Wilder pulled out a close split decision. Second one, not so close. Tyson Fury just absolutely dominated Wilder. And uh, But I was really looking for that third fight uh, to see if Wilder could have redeemed himself and then once again be crowned champion. Um, now let's talk about it was came in out in the news uh, recently it's basically the upcoming fights and uh, you know promoters have been saying the past month or so the same thing you know we expect to be back we're ready to be back as soon as uh, these mandates you know we hit certain phases in the these states and athletic commissions and once the states are are on board we can move forward so there was really nothing set in stone or really nothing that could be set in stone uh, so you know, uh, you know their respective countries. You know they all. Everybody has it because boxing is such a spread out sport. It's you know different commissions, different countries, uh, different promotions. So that kind of makes everything even a little bit harder. As if we're in an NBA or a league. You know everything's kind of unified, and uh, you know all together at the same time, like the NBA or uh, even UFC which this past week put on two consecutive shows successfully. And then they have a third scheduled for uh, tomorrow, Saturday, May 16th. And uh, the first two shows, you know, happened with no major setbacks. Um, obviously, I think a couple people did test positive, but they were, you know, they were quickly uh, tested and then quarantined. Uh, so, you know, they did a great job not letting that spread out to more and more fighters or more people within their camp. And uh, this is probably good news for the boxing fans around the world uh, seeing this. Um, so when will it be back? Um, well, a lot of promoters, like I said, have proclaimed that they'll be back sometime in the summer. Um, this week, top ranks Bob Arum was the first to actually see, you know, give a date and actually say he has a venue. So he's he told ESPN's uh, Steve Kim that he's planning an event for June 9th, which is only, uh, you know, less than a month away. Um, it's going to be slated to be held at an MGM property. So just the fact that he gave an actual date and uh, is in the works that he's at an MGM property, I'm very optimistic about that. And I think him seeing how the UFC fared and uh, getting through it without any major, major uh, controversies or anything that showed that the virus could spread very easily from fighter to fighter, um, I think most promoters are going to be able to look at this and uh, now that they have the a groundwork uh, They have a path uh, And they can get back to fights You know Aram said like it was a tentative date, but if he's saying that you know if he's actually putting a date uh, And he actually mentioned the name uh, Shakur Stevenson who we talked about earlier um, That he was in the mix to be to headline that card so that would be a solid card. Uh, Aram said it'll be all the fighters who have a, a, appeared on the main event or in semi-main event on past shows televised on ESPN or streaming on ESPN+. Plus. Aram said uh, those will be high caliber shows, in quote. Uh, this will not be the big fights. He, saw, he also went on to say it will not be like Vasily Lomachenko or versus Teofimo Lopez. Um, obviously, Lomachenko is still in Ukraine, and he's unable to travel here at the moment. And uh, so he was—he t- says he's in contact with Frank Warren, Eddie Hearn, and uh, he wants, you know, he wants to put his fighters against, you know, fighters like Josh Taylor, Carl Frampton, Mike Collin, who are overseas in Europe as well. We just have to wait for this uh, phase. Hopefully, there's no spikes 
and uh, our uptake in the virus here spreading. Hopefully, we can kind of just stay at zero, uh, no increases or sudden surges, and I think we can kind of get closer and closer to that goal of having these fights uh, get going. Uh, not only here in the U.S., it was just great news that Top Rank has those dates, uh, that date set in his mind, and with the actual fighter in mind, uh, you know, other other promotional uh, promotional entities, you know, like uh, PBC, Golden Boy, Mayweather Promotions, they've laid out broader plans, but they're you know have yet to really secure a site like Top Rank uh, in Mexico as well. Zanfer Promotions. Uh, which works closely with Top Rank and their CEO Fernando Beltran has already laid out his plans uh, for the return of three world champions. That's also set in June, uh, and that's going to be in Mexico. So, like I said earlier, you know the way boxing is spread out from country to country. Uh, so Mexico, uh, very promising that we'll, they'll be able to get back in the ring as well. Uh, he plans to bring back Miguel Burchelt, junior lightweight champion, great fighter, action fighter. Another action fighter, WBO junior weight, uh, Emmanuel Navarrete. Man, so this, these are great fights. I mean, even if they're not fighting top tier guys yet, just be great to see him back in the ring. Uh, he is also bringing back a uh, fight with flyweight champion Alwin Soto. Uh, obviously, all these are tentative dates for the fights, and also the, they're not going to be held. None of these are going to be held with an audience yet. Pretty sure each and every one is going to try to use that UFC model that we just saw over the weekend. Uh, no audience. It's just uh, the commentators, uh, the film crew, uh, the essential corner corner people for the fighters, things like that. Uh, they had the ring card girls in there. Things, you know, very minimal people. It was kind of weird, kind of eerie at first, just to see. It was good to see a, some fights. Don't get me wrong, but it was also kind of weird with uh, Buffer announcing with his, you know, his usual vigor and zest, kind of screaming at the top of his lungs and. But there's no one around. Like, who who is he screaming to? I understand he's talking to the people at home, but it was just weird about the crowd chanting and uh, just a weird, weird uh, situation. But after the first couple of fights, he kind of didn't even notice. And the fighters, I mean, themselves, they're fighting. Once they're fighting, they're focused in, they're locked in. They gave some great fights. So I'm looking forward to this being the same thing with boxing. Um, in Mexico, Baltran basically said that he plans for uh, Navarrete and Pedro Campa to fight on June 6th, which is actually a couple days earlier than uh, here in at the MGM property, the Aram laid out on June 9th. Uh, he has Omar Aguilar and Jackie Nava on June 13th. He has Luis Neri and uh, Alan David Picasso on June 20th. And then he would like to bring back uh, Burchelt and Soto on the 27th. So he's got, you know, basically four weeks on the map here in June, combine that with uh, Trump. I mean, excuse me, Trump. <laughs> they they remind me very similarly in their in the way they conduct business. Sometimes that's why that, that kind of slipped out there. But combine that with his date on June 9th and possibly a couple more after that, we could see maybe four or five, maybe even six boxing dates in June, which would be wonderful. Time to get back and see those fights, man. I'm I'm been uh, itching for that, uh, especially all those mega fights that are supposed to happen like Fury and Wilder and I was really looking forward to the to the Theofo Theofemo Lopez and uh, Vasil Lomachenko fight uh, kind of coming in into the mix here at you know maybe in uh, early fall or late summer they've been kind of talking trash Theofemo a great talent uh, obviously he's young but he's uh, he's hungry and uh, Vasily, we know his, I mean, he's considered one of the top three fighters in the world for the past two years. And, uh, but he is a smaller guy. And that's what Teofimo has been saying uh, through social media, that he's just a bigger, naturally bigger, stronger guy. Vasily is just so skilled, quick, fast. Obviously, so experienced with his amateur background, with the gold medals. And then now the championships and the uh, multiple weight divisions, championships and multiple weight divisions. That would be a great fight. Um also, with uh, like I said earlier, with the flight restrictions, uh, Matchroom is trying to get uh, Anthony Joshua a fight. They had talked about last week somewhere in Saudi Arabia. Uh, now it looks like uh, Eddie Hearn has turned his sights to uh, Pula Arena in Pula, Croatia. It's one of the list of venues interested in hosting the heavyweight bout, which would be encouraging. Uh, definitely want to see Anthony Joshua get back in the ring. Uh, and it would be a competitive fight because Pula is his mandatory Will he present any issues with Joshua? I mean, 
they can't really say no. I mean, look what Andy Ruiz was, was able to do. No one gave him a shot, and he came out of nowhere. So um, I definitely just want to see that these fighters get back in the ring. I definitely want to see what like what the UFC did over this past weekend and just get some fights going, uh, get the their system in in order with the testing. You know, making sure they following every every guideline, every protocol to keep everyone safe. Make sure to keep that disease from spreading across. And uh, make sure there's no hiccups. So that way we can, you know, little by little, whether it takes six months, a year, two years to finally get back into this normalcy uh, where we have packed arenas, live audiences, and just, you know, fans cheering, going nuts, going crazy for these great fighters, uh, which, you know, is part of the puzzle. Uh, it's kind of weird, strange to see these guys fighting with, with no audience and no cheering. You can hear every single word that the corner people are saying. You can hear them breathing, for God's sakes. You can hear them chewing gum. Um, you know, however long it takes, hopefully, uh, the scientific community can come out with some vaccines, uh, treatments, things like that. So there won't be as much strict protocol with face masks, social distancing, and we can get our sporting events back. You know, I'm a big NBA fan, big NFL fan. And, uh, you know, if we, if, if boxing and the UFC can get it together and kind of show, that this can work um, maybe other sports will follow suit and we can start getting back to a little bit of normal uh, things in the world uh, so that was just a, a quick update on the state of boxing at the moment you know it is May 15th so if you're listening it today or within the day um, you obviously know that you know this is what's going on obviously if you're listening to this later in the future because it is a podcast uh, things have may, have may have changed for the positive hopefully and uh, maybe we'll have some more fights on the card count cal- on the fight calendar, uh, and uh, and when that happens, once we start seeing that calendar fill up, and once we start seeing fights, I will definitely be back uh, with a new show. Uh, looking to get some interviews going here in the near future, since everybody is uh, you know self quarantined at home, practicing social distancing most of the time, like I pretty much think we all are. To some point, obviously, you're going for to the supermarket or taking our dog for a walk things like that just to, just feel a little bit normal but for the most part trying to be safe trying not to uh spread the disease if, you, if you're asymptomatic you know even if you're young and healthy uh you know just trying to be a good good humanitarian but also not drive yourself crazy uh so you know going back to that too, if you want to support the show uh you can support one of my uh, sponsors koi cbd that's koi cbd.com uh, you can enter the promo code the boxing wire uh, and that'll get you 20% off your order uh, I personally use the CBD oil vape uh, I also use the tincture which is basically like a little dropper under your tongue uh, take that in the morning kind of to get my day going get my head straight after a little exercise things like that and take it at night help me get a good night's sleep and uh, you know the vape throughout the day if I'm feeling a little anxiety as probably most of us are just kind of sitting at home if if you have jobs where you you're you're lucky enough to have a job where you can work from home you obviously you get a little stir crazy not be able to really go out into the world like you normally do and you know for those of us who unfortunately don't have work you know we're stuck at home not doing anything um we try to keep busy um so this cbd you know that can help alleviate that you can even give it to your pets you know it's safe it's a non-psychoactive part, obviously, of the uh, cannabis plant. It's not the THC, uh, so it's you know it doesn't get you a doesn't get you a high. Basically, just you get all the you get all the medicinal uh, properties. So go ahead and check it out, uh, koicbd.com. I'm gonna put the links under this description, and uh, you can click directly from there. Just remember, enter the boxing wire promo code. Uh, there's no spaces in the promo code, and it's in all caps. So the boxing wire, all caps no spaces and also support our friends at fanatics.com I think right now like I said if you're listening to this within a day or two uh, go to fanatics.com or just hit the link uh, the boxingwire.com slash sponsors just hit that link Uh, there you'll see a banner to fanatics right now they're having a 60% uh, site-wide sale so go ahead and stock up on your sports uh, your favorite teams Especially it's Father's Day, you know, your dad's favorite team. Get them a new hat, New Jersey. Uh, like getting forward to the NFL. Also, baseball, once that comes back. Uh, it's, I shop there myself. I shop there for myself. Get my hats. Uh, get my shirts. Shop there for my friends, my family. Uh, 
Uh, so please support our sponsors. I really appreciate it. And then lastly, uh, try to put one of these out once a week. I know there's not much to talk about right now, but any little you know progress or news, put a make make a little five or ten minute um, podcast just to keep you up to date. So go ahead and don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button, whatever you however you're listening to. Obviously on iTunes, you hit subscribe. Uh, Google Play, you can hit subscribe. Spotify, Stitcher, um, and I'm on 13 different uh, platforms. So however you're listening, I appreciate it. Just click subscribe so the the podcast feed will automatically download into your feed any anytime we have a new episode and then also click that those little share icons share it on twitter on your facebook instagram um tick tock wherever wherever you wherever social media you're into go ahead and share uh, i really appreciate you guys listening and uh i hope to do this again soon uh, so go ahead and uh, take care and i'll talk to you next time Have a great day. Hopefully next time we talk, I'll have some fights to talk about.